Hi, how are you guys doing? And welcome back to Mask of Deception with me, your girl, No Fuses. Uh, we got through some monster battles and I think now we're heading to the capital. So without further ado, let's dive on in. And if you guys like this video or this series, then please don't hesitate to give it a big fat like and subscribe to the channel for more. <laughs> Yes, I remember uh, this this game requires a lot of reading and, and beautiful voice acting. The party carries on well past midnight, showing few signs of slowing down. I came outside to cool off a bit in the night air. A brief a breeze kicks in, caressing my cheeks. Phew. The cool air against my body feels nice after being inside the hot inn for so long. Behind me, warm light and cheerful voices filter out from the party. Pray lay me your ears, friends. Marvel as I, master of impressions, to impersonate our dear Ukon. A ruckus cheer goes up. Seems Marmo is giving performance of some kind. A relaxed atmosphere is finally taking hold after everything that's happened. Everyone seems cheerful. Cheerful, huh? The faces of those two men who'd spoken to me during the trip rise unbidden in my thoughts. Hey kid, that Hugh's gonna be disappointed with you if you talk like that. That's right, a real man sucks it up and goes for broke. And then they'd laugh merrily with their comrades. But, are those the two that died? Those two were nowhere to be seen in Dying Hall just now. They'll never be able to laugh or share drinks with their comrades again. Yeah, those two that died. And yet everyone inside is able to laugh and cheer without care in the world somehow. I think it's because they're just used to that life. They just know that any any day, at any moment, they could all just die. So they're just kind of like living their life to the fullest and not like letting that stuff drag them down. Nobody seems to give any thought toward mourning. Even Kuan doesn't seem to be too bothered. And... Even after that entire herring ordeal, I don't feel like I've been terribly affected either. Hmm, what are you doing out here, kid? I turned to the source of the voice and found Ukon approaching with a bottle of sake in one hand. Came out to get a better fresh air, huh? Something, something like that, yeah. I see. Hey, care to walk with me for a bit? I accompany Ukon down the darkened path. We walk by moonlight, casting long shadows into the already dusky blue light. Hey kid, something I mean to ask you. That missy you're traveling with, who is she? You mean Kuon? Yeah, I figured you might know something. Why are you interested in her? I wonder myself, honestly. I suppose I'm just a curious type. You're not falling for her, are you? She's certainly a beautiful woman, but I'm not attracted to her in the way you're probably thinking. Besides, hitting on her would be a bit... a bit... Eh, it's nothing. She certainly is an amazing woman. Her appetite's amazing, maybe. Ha! No, I don't mean that. But you're not wrong. I meant more her aura, the way she carries herself, that fear fearlessness, the lack of hesitation in face of life or death situation, makes you wonder what kind of life she's led. At that, Ukon's voice grows goes quiet. Yeah, it goes quiet. Now that he mentions it, I really don't know much about Kuan. I owe her for saving my life, and I don't want to pry, so I haven't really asked about her past. You don't know anything, huh? Well, you haven't known her very long. Guess it can't be helped. She calls herself a mere apothecary. When she said that, I was about to blurt it out. Where in the world are there apothecaries like you? Before long, Ukon comes to a stop. Where are we? Are we about to visit their graves? We're in a small distance outside the village. Large standing stones sit arranged in even rows. Is this a graveyard? Sorry for making you come to a grim place. Couldn't rest easy about bringing them some sake. Ukon stands in front of one particular stone decorated with multiple colored ornaments. Offerings of flowers, food, and liquor sit arranged around it. Sorry for being so late. I guess I'm not being the last one. Ukon mumbles under his breath, as though speaking to the gravestones in front of him. So these offerings were left by the rest of the company? Seems like others came to pay their respects before Ukon did. 
Not everyone's so good with their muckered stuff. When we see people off, we do it with a smile and a cheer. That's what we all decided. Together. Ah! So, basically, them, like, having fun is, like, their way of mourning. Instead of crying and, you know, being devastated about their death, you're like, nah, we're, we're gonna do the complete opposite. I see. Yeah, there's no way it wasn't difficult for him, losing so many comrades. Nobody knows when or how death can come for us. If we die in battle, our bodies may be left behind. But I'm glad the least we can do is offer the dead proper memorials. Yukon sinks to his knee, muttering in prayer. Following his lead, I kneel beside him, offer son a prayer. I witness this end to your time in our world. Rest now, we may drink together in Kutohamaru. Hope I said that right. Ukon? Alright. Let's head back and get plastered, eh, kid? Huh, yeah. Puzzled, I follow our Ukon as he takes off down the path again. What was that strange feeling just now? As I turn away from the graveyard, I can't help but notice in a um, a bunch of money amongst the offerings, stuff too full to be eaten in one bite. Ah, she came there too. <sighs> the room is already painfully bright by the time I dare to open my eyes. I can hear voices, but I'm alone in the room. Ugh, my head. Hi, Hangover. How are you? <laughs> I don't think anybody would even talk in a hangover. They'd just be like, oh god, a hangover. Where's the aspirin? Tylenol. Definitely drank too much last night. Uh, I managed to pour myself a jug of water and down the whole thing in one go, clearing my head. Just how late was I up partying last night? They made me a drink with them after I came back with Ukon, and everything after that is hazy. Man, must have been a strong shot. <laughs> Seems like I managed to make it to bed, at least. Halfway into my second jug of water, Kuan enters, already fully dressed. Morning, sleepyhead. Back in the world of living now. Yeah, I just woke up. You don't look like you're doing too well. I guess I shouldn't be surprised considering last night. Y yeah, I got a bit of a hangover. Hmm. I guess that might be the case, so I prepared a little something to help here. Kuan holds out a bowl in her hands. Fill it to the brim with something dark green in Fiskus. Green tea? It's medicine that'll help sober you up. Be careful though, it's got a bit of a strong flavor. Ah, thank you. <laughs> ah, why'd you spit it out for? G -g uh. what, 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 it's, what is this flavor? It's somehow bitter, hot, sweet, and sour all at the same time. The best medicine always has a bitter taste. You may not like it, but I can guarantee its effects. Why you is this, <coughs> is this just punishment for sleeping in too late? Hmm. Nothing of the sort. This medicine is my specialty. It even earned my father's praise. Either has biased because you're his child, or he couldn't bring himself to tell the truth. You get used to the flavor. It's almost addicting. A mature notes profile for refined palates. Quinn puts her lips to the bowl in her hands. Hmm, delicious. The bitterness lends it a depth of colors that almost indescribable. Seeing her drinking the vile stuff down readily, I nearly gag. Ugh. Maybe her her and her dad have the same taste buds. Gah, the inside of my mouth is still. There's no doubt my hangover is receding, but that foul taste is still lingering in my mouth. If she was feeding this stuff to her father on a, on a regular, she was definitely trying to murder him. Hmm? A rising noise in the distance interrupts my thoughts. Some kind of commotion outside the inn. Poking my head out to find the source of the hubbub, I spy large carts parked in the central plaza. A number of few faces chat with the villagers. The people who came with the cavern, no doubt. Hell yeah, kid. Sleep well? Well enough so I don't remember a damn thing. <laughs> I don't doubt it. Even our missy was having trouble waking you up. It was something to see her nursing you doing while you were dead-ass drunk. <laughs> Don't say that. Haha, <laughs> it's fine, come on. I think some of the men wanted you dead from envy seeing her take care of you. 
That's not fun at all. Forget it. So what's in the carts? Examining one of the carts' wagons more closely, it looks larger than the ones around the village. Escorting this cargo to the capital is why we originally came out here. We get hired for it. Then you'll be on your way soon, huh? Yeah, we're in the middle of a handover. As soon as everything's squared away, we'll be off. I see. Which means it's goodbye for now. Since we're all bound for the city, we'll no doubt meet again. I know I already asked, but are you sure you won't come with us? You really wouldn't be in trouble. Ah, uh, well, I wouldn't mind it, but Cohen's the one who makes those decisions for us. Whatever you say, how about it, Missy? Consider my offer any further? Hmm? Glance over my shoulder, I know it's Kuan who hadn't had been standing there just a moment ago. She was feeling silent, her eyes seemed focused on the caravan, quietly scrutinizing it. Kuan? Huh? Oh, what's up? That's what I was going to ask you, the offer to go with them. Are you sure about refusing? Uh, about that. Kuan Mom will seem seeming to nod and think for an extended moment. Considering her quick refusal last night, I doubt she'll have changed her mind so quickly. I believe we'll take you up on your offer. Huh? I thought I thought it oh, uh, I thought it over. Considering the danger yesterday presented, it would be best if we all stuck together. Haha -ha. Well then welcome aboard you two. I doubt there'll ever be a dull moment with you around. If you're coming along then you ought to pack up. We're out of here as soon as our business is done. Okay, we'll see you shortly then. Why does one change a heart? Whatever could you mean? Feeling ignorance, Quinn spares another glance toward the low cavern, smiling faintly. Yeah, there's something in the carts that she's eyeing. And she either wants it or she knows what it is. Here I see gets to better me and I turn to follow her gaze. Oof. What? In the moment I stop looking where I'm going, I bump into a really big fluffy wall. Oh, pardon. Then I hear a female voice from above me. What? <laughs> Are you riding on a giant pigeon? Holy! When I look back in front of me, an enormous bird creates. An enormous bird creature blocked my path, ridden by a young girl. I'm so sorry about. Um, it's uh, okay. I'm the. Uh, oh, it's okay. I'm the one who bumped into you. That thing is huge, and that girl is riding it. That's a relief. Come on, Kokopoo. Boo just be in everyone's way standing here. Huh? Kokopoo. Probably the bird's name. Disobeys its master, edging closer to put his face close to mine. What's with this thing? It likes him. And then it starts to rub its gigantic, fluffy, furry head against my face. But what? But what's with it all of a sudden? Kokopo? Is it trying to snuggle up to me? I've never seen Kokopo become attached to someone like this. It'd be fine if it were, you know, a small animal. Not something that could accidentally crush me. This is just a pain in the neck. It's so big, it's more gently shoved me more than snuggling. The woman's pet becomes attached to a man, and they grow closer for it. This is nothing like those stories. <laughs> Technically, it is. It's just, you know, the, the pet in particular is bigger than what you hoped. And this thing is coming on to me way too strong. Too close for comfort. But, well, I'll just be going then. Oh! I'm starting to get a little creeped out by this thing, so I'll try to beat a hasty retreat and... It tackled you. Yeah, I knew it. It's like following him now. It's following me. Why is it following me? Even as I quick in my pace, I can hear swimsuits right behind me. <laughs> it's stomping all over the place. Oh my god, it's running at this point. If I run as fast as I can, I doubt it'll- Ugh! God damn it, it's too fast! Cook a pose! No, stop, please! Try to stop it with a, with a more assertive voice than that little mouse whisper, damn it! <laughs> Wait, ah! Even running as hard as I can, I can't outpace it. It tags me with enthusiasm and I go flying. 
Ugh, it's heavy. Then it sits its entire bulk happily on top of me. Ugh, I can't move. Uh, are you alright, sir? The younger looks at me with worry from her place in the saddle. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, ve I'm very sorry. She dismounts and begins to apologize profusely. You don't need to say sorry. Just please get it off me. Yes, of course. Come on, Kukubu, stand up. It wasn't cause trouble. Here, just step a little to the... No, 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 no. I said step, not two step. Come on, move, please. She tries everything she can to get the bird to move, pushing, pulling, shoving, all to no avail. I'm so sorry, it's no use. You're giving up too quickly. Try a little harder, please. Okay, here we go. Take this. Is she really putting her all into it? Guess it can't be helped. Just grab my hand, would you? Huh? For some reason, she goes red at that request, becoming flustered. Bye bye. Please, it's not gonna budge that much, is clear. Oh, okay. Red in the face, she uncertainly takes my hand. Be sure to pull with all your might. Yes, of course. Here we go. Take this. Oh my god. Is he like breaking his arm? Gah. Oh my god. Is he ripping your arm off? Ah, uh, things are making noise that shouldn't be making noise. <laughs> ah. Wait, wait, stop, stop. My hand's gonna tear off. Huh? Oh, I'm sorry. You said to do it with all my might, so... Gah, that's some strength on her. So she's not so weak after all. Hmm? What are you doing over there, kid? Can't you tell by looking? Well, it looks like you're being crushed by a giant bird. <laughs> I'm glad we got that cleared up a little while, please. <laughs> I can't! How about we put it aside for the moment, yeah? Introductions first. This is Princess Ruliote. Ruliote? Hope I said that right. She's the daughter of Lord Ozen, Olo of Kijiri, and one of the Eight Pillars. Don't put it aside. I kind of need help. Wait, what did he just say? Oh. As I glance back at the young bird rider, she hurriedly bows her head. A princess? Lily Ruleth. This is Haku, who will be coming along with us to the capital as our consultant. Yes, my name is Ruleth. It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance. Yeah, you're still being crushed by a giant bird! Hey, Ugun? Yeah, what's up? Did you say princess? Yep, sure did. What's a princess doing in a place like this? What do you mean, in a place like this? Kujuri is Lady Rin's country. No, I don't mean it like that. I mean, why is she way out here in the backwater village? That's because she's on her way to present offerings to the Makado. Makado. Eh? Okay. Offerings to the Makado? That's our cargo. It's proper for a princess to escort her country's offerings to the capital. Yeah, but Makado? Eh? Oh, right. You remember it, huh? The Makado is a great man who rules over most countries of this continent. The god commands him to respect, deep wisdom, and unparalleled power. The outlaws of each country under his control only rule because of the Makado allows them their ult ultimate. So when a country sends tribute, someone of probably high station has got to present it themselves, see? Which means this girl's coming... So this, yeah, so this means this girl's coming with us. That's what I'm trying to say, yeah. The cargo's that valuable, huh? Sure. Preserved meats, textiles, furs, incense, ore, a whole bunch of good stuff. I see, but isn't that a sort of a huge responsibility? I didn't sign up to see my head roll if something goes wrong with all this. Eh, I told you before, we'll be fine. Nobody's gonna be stupid enough to try it with our numbers. No, I don't mean it like that. Don't worry so much. You and Missy just sit back and enjoy the trip, huh? <laughs> Man, I just can't shake this feeling. And she just keeps staring at him. I look over to Ruleth again and she shrinks back a bit. She doesn't seem frightened exactly, more uncomfortable. She's probably just the timid type. Um, hmm? I'm, uh, sorry about, um. Oh, right, the princess stupid bird is still sitting on me. Hey, hey, it's alright. It's not like it's your fault. But Kokopu is mine, so. 
Really? It's okay, you don't exactly order it to do this. But a princess, huh? She certainly seems like one. Now that I look at her, she's dressed much more finely than the others. Quite a, quite a nice girl, too. Huh? And she definitely has that princess-like cuteness about her. Hey, are you hitting on her all of a sudden? What do you mean? Uh, never mind. Um, ah, uh, ah! Uh. And now the princess vision resent. Does she need the bathroom or something? Uh, Sir Ukon, please take this. Runes apparently throws a scroll upon toward Ukon, and as if trying to change the subject forcefully. My father asked me to give this to you. Oh, that's. Ukon accepts the scroll and unties it, beginning to read. Hey, never mind that. Can I get a little help here? Trying to get the princess' attention only seems to make her withdraw further. Why? And she's still fishing, really? If she needs the bathroom, she just excuse herself. Hmm, princess. Eep! Something wrong? What was that noise you made just now? No, no, it's nothing. If you say so. Did Lord Ozan say anything besides what's in this letter? He, uh, told me to follow any orders he gave me, Sir Ugan. I see. All right then, princess. You just leave everything to us. Yes, of course. Rule. Rule to. Oh my god, her name! Puts her hands to her chest and breathes a sigh of relief. Good, I'll go and get them and prepare for the departure. Very well, thank you. Hey, now, you aren't going to help me out here? Yukun leans down to whisper in my ear. See, the thing is, the bird's got a bit of a mischief streak. Seems it'll mess with anything it finds interesting, and it's a, been a pain in the ass all the way here. What are you trying to say? It finds you interesting, so play with it for a few hours and keep it out of everyone's way, will you? What? Sorry, I owe you a drink when we hit the capital. Hey, wait! Thanks for volunteering, I'm counting on you! <laughs> we just went- Damn it, he's gone! Uh... <sighs> Don't worry about it, okay? I'm gonna keep saying that- I'm going to keep saying that until you stop apologizing. I know the bird's not doing this because you want it to. Huh? Hmm? Is she poking me? Suddenly, something pokes me in, in my cheek. What? Above me stands an unfamiliar person wrapped from head to toe in thick cloth poking my face. And you are? I can't even tell if they're male or female. They're, uh, their wrap-like robes totally obscure everything. The stranger remains silent at my question, continuing to prod my cheek discreetly. Hello? Eek! Oh, um, I wasn't talking to you, but is this an acquaintance of yours? No, no. She just keeps poking me. What's up with this guy? And then I feel a pressure against my other cheek, poking more. But this person isn't the one doing it. Someone else is probably from the other side. Who the... They're just both poking him. Huh? On my other side, another figure dressed in the same mysterious clothing pokes at me. Am I being poked in the cheeks by two identically dressed people who don't care to explain themselves? What the hell is going on? I have officially stopped understanding any of this. Why is this happening to me? Sorry to keep you waiting. We got into a long conversation and what are you doing? By all means, you tell me. Who were those two? That's what I want to know. Eh, wait, they're gone. The rogue cheap pokers have straight vanished. Glancing around as best as I'm able, I can't catch a glimpse of them anywhere. I only looked away for a moment and they disappeared right out from under me. What the hell was that about? I have a feeling we're going to see them again. Hmm, you made a friend, I see. No, no, don't look at my face. That beak is huge and you're gonna crush my head. Please don't. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Coco, please stand up. Really, she tries to push Kokopo off of me, but once again, she can't bring it to even budge. Kokopo, may I? Huh? Perhaps it's only because she can't bear to watch anymore, but Kokopo walks up besides Rulet. You're a hopeless little thing, aren't you? You mustn't be naughty, you know. Kuan murmurs through the bird and gently strokes its neck, and it nonchalantly stands. Ah, that was an experience. I can breathe again. Thank you, Kuan. Hmm, you're very welcome. 
Kukupa, when I asked you didn't, why? It's because you're so close, I think. Huh? Kukupo thinks of you more as a friend than an owner. So your commanding was entered as playing, I think. Is this true, Kukupo? I'm Kuan, by the way. Pleased to meet you. You are... Huh? Would you mind telling me your name? Oh, yes, of course. It's Rulu. Rulute. Miss Rulute, huh? It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance. Yes, a pleasure. He he he. He's cute, almost like a little princess. Gwen whispers in my ear, mostly like likely to so Rulu can't hear, so I whisper my reply back in turn. Not almost. She actually is the princess of the country, apparently. Oh, so she's really a princess. Go figure. Yeah, and you're right. She is pretty cute. Oh, that's right. She's coming with us in the capital. Or, well, we're going with her, I guess. Hmm, is that so? Hmm, well, Miss Ruth, would you like to be friends? Huh? Uh, if you don't want to, it's... Oh, um, no, I... Hey, is that okay, Kuan? Ask your princess that so casually? I think it'll be fine. It... I'm not from this country, so it's not like she's my liege or something. That's not what I meant. Like, wouldn't she mine? You say that, but you don't seem exactly flustered yourself. What are you talking about? I've been showing her nothing but respect. I mean, yeah, it's probably because of my memories, but social status stuff hasn't really sunk in. So you wouldn't, so you wouldn't rather be friends, princess? When shakes her head rapidly, clearly anxious. But I don't know what to um do. Nobody's ever asked me that. I don't really have friends. Ah. Ah, I get it. Because she's a princess, she doesn't really have a group of peers to befriend. I suppose it would be the first time for both of us then. Huh? I don't really have anyone I can call a friend either, so it'll be a first for both of us. This is Kuan we're talking about, so... Forever alone because you're always on the road, huh? Can't be tied down for too long? I won't say I'm not surprised, but I guess I can understand- ah! She's looking at her, she's like, really? Oh my gosh, she's breaking my skull again. Ah, it hurts! Why are you squeezing so damn hard? So, will you be my first friend? Seeing the queen offers her hands, we're smiling gently. As her tail death grip around my head tightens dangerously. God, my skull's gonna crack. It's gonna crack! Oh, of course I will, but I don't know what friends are supposed to really do with each other. Talking, playing, anything is fine, I think. I hope we can be good friends. Kuan keeps her, her hand held out as she speaks. Yes. I would very much like to be friends with you. Rilla bashfully reaches out and squeezes Kuan's hand. It's a heartwarming sight. It would be touching even. It weren't being crushed by a vice on the side. I'm sure it's an emotional moment, but this really hurts. Oh, we're finally leaving the village. There we go. Well, we didn't really go that far. The caravan runs lazy along the mountain path. Hmm, this is a nice day out. The wagon is jostling and my butt hurts from every bump in the road, but I'm getting used to it. I've got time to just lay back and leisurely gaze at the sky. The wind's calm too. It really is peaceful weather. If only we weren't traveling with extremely valuable bandit magnet cargo. Ugh. Is he about to throw up again? Wow, this is a luxurious wagon. Or this guy lying in the corner of the wagon reeking to high heaven for that matter. Are they in the cart with me? Oh my god. Meanwhile, I've been unsuccessfully trying to ignore my more uh, immediate circumstances. What exactly are you guys trying to accomplish here? The Misery Tent twins have been sandwiched between have me sandwiched between them and have yet to stop poking my cheeks. I've tried talking to them a few times now, but never to any avail. They're just gonna do their thing. I've given up on getting anything out of them. This is downright bizarre. Really, I could probably just drive them off, but I can't quite bring myself to. I don't want to scare them or make them timid of me or anything.
With my discomfort rising, I glanced around the car caravan for some kind of help. Marmor was not going to be much use. Not that he'd be helpful if he were awake anyway. And Ukon's riding at the head of the caravan. Probably best not to bother him. Kuon. I quickly scan the car caravan for Kuon. That ridiculous Hubert is trailing along right next to the caravan. And on his back, Kuon and Ren chat happily. Seems they're having fun opening up to each other. That's nice to see, but they're so wrapped up in the conversation they probably won't notice me. Kuon suddenly glances towards me. As she knows my gaze, she smiles at me. Kuon. And then she immediately turns back to Rulith and resumes chatting. The enormous bird, however, croon croons at me in a bid for attention. I'm gonna pretend I didn't see it. Hold on, is everyone else just pretending not to notice what's happening with me with these two? They are Anakum walking alongside the caravan, of course, but not one of them is looking this way. In fact, it seems like they're doing everything they can to keep from looking over here. Some are cracking lame forced jokes, or talking about love affairs, or just staring ahead. They seem to be keeping watch fire on our surroundings rather than the caravan itself. Why exactly do these two get left to their own devices? Now that I pay attention to it, it seems like everyone's keeping their eyes off them pretty deliberately. I give up. I give up already. It's not like they're going to do any harm if nobody is going to call them on it. I guess the company doesn't really consider them a problem. Doesn't seem like it anyway. I bet they pull mischief like this all the time and I'm the only one who doesn't, huh? As uh, uh. Remember thrashes in his agonized sleep, he tugs on the cloth that covers the wagon's cargo. The corner of the bizarre object peeks out, catching my eye. Pari, no, not quite. It's a smooth surface, like fine china, decorated with intricate designs. Awkward, forced together boxes and cylinders make up its shape, strange and irregular. No, definitely not pottery. It's almost like some kind of. Suddenly, the poking at my cheese stops. Momentarily free and curious to know the cargo's contents, I reach for the barely clinging cloth. Huh? Something pulls my sleeve back, stopping me. The mysterious duo have each, have each stopped poking me to grab hold of my sleeves. Well, what? They're not pulling too hard, but it's pretty clear that they're trying to get me away from the cargo. Are you trying to tell me not to touch it? They seem to give me a subtle nod in quiet unison. Alright then. I'm not sure what the issue is, but if they don't want me to see it, I guess it's not a big deal. <laughs> now they're stroking him. They're probably like patting his head and like, Good boy. Thank you for listening. What? Instead of poking, now they start stroking my head as if, as if to tell me I'm being a good boy. See, me and the twins were on the same wavelength. They ain't saying nothing, but their actions speak volumes. What the hell is going on? At least we were able to actually communicate for once. Oh well, not gonna dwell on it anymore. All right, everyone, this is as far as we go today. Sentry squad set up the watch and prepare to camp. Yeah. I sit up and stretch. Must have drifted off. I rouse myself and have a look around, getting my bearings. Those two aren't here. I guess they wandered off. The caravan is parked in an open space off the side of the road, fenced off and protected. A camp? Yeah, it looks like, like we're here for the night. What should I do? Guess I should just lie low until it's time to eat. An unskilled, unseasoned person would just get in everyone's way with chores after all. Here, Aku, as long as you're up, would you mind taking care of this? Going to sense on me before I can see her coming, smelling sweetly and holding out a bucket. There's a well over there, so get the cook pot filled up, w would you? Then then the wash off today, and then all the jars we collected, got it? Remember, he who doesn't work doesn't eat. Good luck! Er Okay, what's up? Oh, I get to choose? I get to choose where I go. What, what's the difference between camp and encampment? Campfire is probably where... Mm, I'll just say encampment. You can call out to me as I emerge from the tent. 
Hey kid, if you're free, do you mind tending to the steeds for a bit? Tend to the steeds? I don't mind, but what exactly does that um, involve? Nothing big. Just give them some food, groom them for a bit. Groom? Yeah, give their skin a good scrum with that with his brush. It's not that complicated. We can hold up a large scrubbing brush, wiggling the bristles in my direction. It feels good to them, and when you and when you brush with this, keeps them happy. They're critical to the caravan. If we treat them well, they'll respond in kind and work hard. Just in exchange for good scrub, huh? You'll understand a little better if you ever start writing Steve's kid. Their special whopters are. Yeah, alright. If that's all, then I'll help out and don't want to be a freeloader. I appreciate it, kid. The, the Steve's are hitched outside the camp over there. I'll leave the rest to you. Look at hands with the brush, waves his hands as if formally conferred the duty on me, and then turns to go. No matter how I look at it, these guys look more like ostriches than what the word steed conjures in my head. As I approach the watchers hitched on the fence, they begin to stir and notice to me. Easy there. I'll feed you in a sec, so hold it, will you? <laughs> Here comes the twins. As if from nowhere, those two wrapped in their appear, appear, uh, appear crouching next to the feed bin. Jeez, you two, don't scare me like that. They both look up at me and tilt their heads in use as if to ask, did we scare you? They must understand what I've been saying to them to, re to react like that, right? And by be surprised if they just appear without a word and stare at them. They look at each other, then back at me. Then their hands tilt over to ask, really? They're totally synced. That's some coordination. Their precise, perfectly matched movements almost make me want to ask if they're street performers. So what do you want? They share another look, then turn back to stare inscrutably at me. If you want to watch, do as you please, I guess. Not gonna ruin my day if I stand here figuring out what they want. The steeds will never get fed. I fish what a fish what looks like some kind of vegetable from the feed tub, offering it to the nearest wapter. Jeez, scary. Maybe it's because they're just hungry, but man, they really going for it. I, I could have lost my fingers just now. Not really something I'm eager to have happen, so maybe it's just toss their food to them. Is it the big bird? Bet money it's the big bird. Settle down, guys. There's plenty to go around. My god, they're like fighting each other. It's hopeless. Their eyes are bloodshot with excitement at being fed. This could get out of hand quickly. I glance down at the twins. They're still crouching by the tub of feed. I guess I have no choice. Hey, you two, ever feed a wapter? They slowly turn their stare to me, then shake their heads. <laughs> That's okay, I guess. Care to help me feed these guys? Just try not to get bitten. They each nod, then reach into the feed bin, holding their offerings out for the watchers. Or they're gonna lose their fingers like that. Oh, they're just calmly just eating it. Or so I thought, but the watchers calm down in short order, eating peacefully from their hands. As the watchers eat, the duo the gently stroke the sides of the seed's heads, soothing them. They said they'd never fed wapters, but they seem awfully familiar with- Yikes! Close one! With me, they're devouring their food with enough force to pull my fingers off with it. What gives? It doesn't seem like they hate me, they're just oddly eager. That stupid fat bird gets all worked up around me, too. All the animals around here seem to. Uh, I know. If you like, you two want to help me scrub these guys down? It would be hard to do that on my own with the wapters all antsy like this. They'll probably just mob me. The clothed figures nod. With short bristle scrubbing brushes in hand, they begin to brush the watchers' bodies. As the, the bristles pull against their, their skin, the watchers let out a low, con contented cries. I see that's how you do it, huh? My god! Even my controller vibrated! What was that? Suddenly, I really late, the watcher nearest to me slams my chest with a headbutt. What, what was that for? My whole rear here almost collapsed. The wapter ignores my complaints, nudging me with the brush, clamping in its beak, demanding a scrub. What, you want me to hurry up and do it? Ah, alright, all right, already, stop it! Here, is this the spot you like, big guy? As I push the brush over his body, it starts to breathe harder and stamp his feet in excitement. God, I get it, it feels good, but calm down if you kick me to death, nobody's gonna scrub you at all. 
with those thick buzzwords, I wouldn't take much for the creature like this to do this, to do me in. But why did I get stuck with this guy and not the gentle ones the twins have? <laughs> ah, this poor guy. No sooner than the thought crossed my mind, two massive feathered shapes slam into me. What, you guys too? The two walkers that the road pair have been in charge of nudging with their brushes just like the first. Why are you- where did the two get off to? The mysterious things have disappeared without so much as a word as usual. Wow. The walkers stomp and strum, worked into a tizzy, thrusting the brushes at me instantly. Aren't you supposed to be the gentle ones? <laughs> <laughs> ah, quit jabbing with the brushes. I'll do it, okay? Why me? Will you wait just a goddamn... Oh. Where have you guys been? You know what? It's not like you're gonna answer. Can I get some help here? The pair both tug on my sleeve, ignore what I'm saying as they point in a poaching shape. Huh? Is it the big bird? The sound of footsteps that are... Somehow at once, both heavy and bouncy, fills my ears. Yep, I knew it. It's probably jealous. And then that seemingly bird song. No, don't tell me. That troublesome bird bounds into the padlock, a uh, paddock, chirping with bubbly enthusiasm, and holding a scrubbing brush in its beak. It's a kookaburra. Okay, what's up next? Okay. I think the campfire is uh, the stuff, so we'll just go to the camp. Now that this, this is a big spot, an enormous cook pot hangs over the stove in the corner of the campfire. Susan happening away. Not too far away, Emna is being baked, a tall pile of doughy skins already stocked on the table. Oh, Master Haku, what seeks there hereabouts? One more takes note of me and swaggers over a bag in his arms. Ah, uh, just watching the preparations, I've never considered how much work goes into feeding so many people. Verily, tis mine own first sergeant amongst a company of such great number, to be sure. And what are you doing? What I, ah, uh, I got zu duty compelled steadfast Marmoro to assist the sweatling Lady Ruth. Help me out, huh? Marmoro frankly looks around for Lady Ruth. Hurrying over as soon as he spots her. Mistress Rulis, look thee not a moment longer, for thy table salt I have found thee itself. Probably he holds out the bag in his hands to Rulis. Ah, thank you. A simple kitchen area has been set up beneath a tent. Chop uh, fruits, veggies, arranged on a table. Rulis stands on the table and pulls a solid chunk from Rulis' bag, crushing it into powder. Ah, uh, sir... Sir Haku. You're... You're cooking, Rulis? Uh, um, this is all I can really do to help everyone, so... Isn't it hard preparing food for so many people at once, though? No, 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 not really. I used to manage the characters at the castle, so... Huh? I wouldn't have thought princes would be doing that kind of manual labor. I feared you would be a little more, I don't know, detached from all that. Uh, well, my family only rules the outlands, so we're not very powerful as nobles go. And Miss Corn is helping me, of course. Corn too, huh? What, surprised that I'm helping out? Ugh! Quan's voice suddenly speaks from the right behind me. I jump almost a full foot into the air. I turn to find her smiling, but it doesn't quite extend to her eyes. You may recall I was traveling alone before I picked you up. I had to do everything myself. No, no, no. I was trying to imply that you can't, uh. You just... You just watch and witness my skills for yourself, non-believer. Quan swiftly twirls the kitchen knife in her hands, and she makes this proclamation, pointing at me. Does she have bad memories of being told she's a poor chef or something? Lilith, are you sure that that much salt will be okay? Uh, I thought it might be better if the flavor was a little stronger. Everyone's working so hard, I figured, figured more salt would help replace what they're sweating out. Oh, that makes sense. Good point. I can't tell... I can tell I'm not really going to be helped, so I retreat to the edge of the tent to watch from the side. Oh, but to sup upon such victuals as doth wrought by Lady Ruth on the hand, how I hunger. He's right, I gotta admit, I'm looking forward to seeing what handmade dish come out. Um, hmm? Ruth approaches me with the small plate, offering it meekly. Here, please taste 
please taste this if you wouldn't mind. What's this? Simmered food sits lovely arranged on the plate in her hand, steaming enticingly. I, I hope it's to your liking. Wow, it looks delicious. Take a simmered screw from the plate, eagerly sampling the food impaled on it. It's cooked thoroughly, seasoned with perfect amount of salt that doesn't overwhelm and homemade rustic f flavor. This is amazing. You're an excellent cook, Rilith. Oh, sorry. I suppose... Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm supposed to call you princess, right? That was probably rude of me. No, no, please call me Rilith. Here, try mine next. You made some too? Don't mind if I do... My hand freezes halfway to the plate Cohen is proffering. Uh, Cohen? What is it? What exactly is this? Same as yours. Same thing Rilith is making. It's, uh, definitely simmering, all right. Isn't it a little, um, big? It's five times the size as one Rilith. Now have a taste. This is a meal, not a taste. It's generous to even call this a skewer. The wood brought itself is bending under the strain of the meat to wait. Carefully take the behemoth in my hand, then bite into it with that reluctant vigor I can muster. Ha 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 Come on, don't nibble on it. Little by little, like that, take the whole thing with mouthful. Ha! Come on, Corinne, be reasonable. It's not bad per se, but the flavors are all on the outside. The meat hasn't absorbed a bit of it. I suppose if I take it all in one bite, like she wants me to, it would be more spread out, but. Hmm? How is it? Corinne has a very proud look on her face. It's probably exactly to her taste, but I don't know how to break this to her. It's good, I guess. I thought so. The full batch is almost ready, so there'll be more where that came from. I'm using good liberally, of course. It's fairly good, good. Really gives a small chugger from beside me. When I look over to her, she quickly averts her eyes, bashful. She's awfully down to earth for a princess. She doesn't have that haughtiness that I would expect, not to mention she's approachable. Uh, anyway, at this rate, I'm going to be full before dinner's even ready. Okay, what's up next? What's up next is for me to end this episode, because it's been going on for a little while. We're going to figure out, uh, well, I'll click on what's going to happen at this scene, the campfire scene, next time. But I hope you guys enjoyed this episode, watching him being attacked by birds and meeting cute princesses. Um, and next time, we'll hopefully, we'll be at the capital. Um, but until then, I'll see you guys next time. If you guys like this video, then please... Don't hesitate to give it a big fat like and subscribe to the channel for more. Bye. See you later.